Hello guys, my name is Jacques Fetter. Uh, I'm the owner and lead technical designer of Gannett. Since I posted uh, the pictures of a, a Mokto drone, I've been inundated with um, inquiries of how it was made and so on. Um, firstly, I'm not making it as a one-off. That will be a production drone. So I'm not really interested in making a single drone fly. That's, that's the easy part. A um, little bit of history. Not my first drone. Uh, these are, this is a Gannett Pro Plus, and this is a Gannett Pro, and there's a Gannett Air. Um, the production drones. So we've gone through the process of 3D printing many prototypes, um, reinforcing them where we need to reinforce them, and eventually making uh, plastic injection molds, and now we can mass produce these. So we can replicate it again and again and again, and we know it will work soon. Um, but the Mapto is too big for plastic injection molding. Uh, that thing will break plastic arms. It will be stupidly heavy if you try to make it out of plastic. So this thing has an arm that's only one centimeter thick, so it's 0.4 of an inch. It's, it's very narrow, and that's done for aerodynamics. So to make that, you need carbon, and 3D printing just won't, it won't cut it. Uh, the, the weight of a motor alone will most likely break it off. So how did I do it? Um, first, I print many prototypes. I don't know how many of these I printed. Let's say it's more than 10, far more than 10. Uh, until I get a shape that I actually want and that I know can connect to the body. So I print the body as well and the connection and how the connection works. So when I'm finally happy with that, I switch over and design the molds. So these are just small enough so they can print easy and fast. Um, so this mold can actually make a carbon uh, version of that. Um, you can go and sand this, uh, fill it um, with body putty, sand it fine, and you can make wet glaze from this exact mold. But you cannot do any vacuum forming. If you do a vacuum form this, if you vacuum bag this, it will break. Um, the air pressure will simply squash this thing to nothing and you'll end up with a thing that that doesn't represent what you want in, at the end of the day. So from this, uh, I do prepare it, sand it, and so on. They're actually lying it down here somewhere. But from this, I make uh, silicon molds. So that comes out of a silicon, and I end up with a silicon mold that looks like that. So this is for one arm. And from that, I can then cast this. This is a polyurethane mold. So that polyurethane mold comes out of there, and that one comes out of there, and that one comes out of here, with all its features, whatever, uh, the other way around, doesn't matter, it comes out of it like that. Um, and this polyurethane is 50% by mass aluminium, there's aluminium powder in here. It is very rigid, it is very hard, and it's thermally conductive. So if you uh, do do carbon fiber in here, in here you, you can do a full uh, pre preg uh, vacuum formed carbon fiber uh, part in here um, and cook it in an oven. This can actually take the temperature of an oven as well. So, but I don't have an oven here. Um, I've got a little box that can make it up to about 60 degrees Celsius, but not an oven. So, after I've got this, I then did a wet layout. So, um, this one actually works in two parts, three parts. Uh, I did a wet layout in there. Five layers of carbon fiber, and then this part goes in there, and it screws down and bolts down in place. Uh, that forms the inside here, so that's that B surface on, on the back of the scalp. This part goes in there, and that forms a B surface on the connecting point where it connects to the body. So that the inside is actually the exact true shape what I want as it connects to the body, so I know I've got a secure connection. So that and that, that will go together like that, and that will go together like that, and there we go. Alright, but I did that half, and I did this half. After I did the two halves, I had them cure. It was vacuum bag, so the resin was sucked out of it. Um, uh, when you vacuum bag it, you have a, a peeled cloth, a peeled, a peeled cloth layer, and you've got a, a breather layer. In, in the breather layer sucks up all the excess uh, resin. I mixed uh, 100 gram of resin when I made this thing, and this thing ended up being a 
total with the carbon as it is here, 123 grams. That's it. So my whole arm is 123 grams. And it is rock solid. This thing is really, really, really strong. You, you cannot flex it, you cannot bend it. All the curves um, work together to, to make a really rigid structure. Okay, um, then I had the two halves, and then you have to join this, these two halves. And how I did that is I laid it back down into the molds, uh, like that. So that was that half, and there's another half on this side. And I laid another layer of uh, carbon fiber cloth, this stuff. That's a carbon fiber cloth with a little bit of resin. So I laid that on the inside. And then on this one, I actually took uh, two condoms. I opened the condoms up, inflated it with a little bit of air, um, like one cubic inch of air in there, uh, knotted it up, closed it off, and I laid it on that wet cloth. And then I folded the wet cloth over the condom, condoms. And uh, eventually I put the other half on it. So I put this half on it. I bolted the whole thing shut with everything in place. I uh, didn't need that one, but with this in place as well. Right, bolted it up and stuck that back into a vacuum bag. And the vacuum would then um, draw the condom open. The condom can't ex expand bigger than the internal volume, so it can only be that size on the inside. That's it. But that surface area on the inside there, um, if you draw a vacuum on it, results that that condom would put out a force of about 180 kilograms on the inside of this thing, trying to open it up again. But that's consolidating the joining membrane then from the top to the bottom. So I end up with a um, after, it, after it's cured and I've removed the condom, I end up with a perfect joint. It's completely sealed um, and very, very strong. The, the two holes are now one. And there we go. So that's how I made a prototype of the arms. Eventually, for production, these are um, CNC cut out of aluminium. So that we can reproduce them reliably exactly the same every time. And aluminium is really good when it comes to uh, pre-pregnated uh, carbon fiber um, part making and that's it guys that's how I that's how the arms and stuff is made if you want to make a one-off uh, a single one you can go and um, what do they call it um, you, you can cover this with carbon fiber um, you'll have to watch your sizes uh, it's it's a big job you can do it but it will not be as strong as this. This is five layers, um, resulting in about a, a one millimeter thick um, wall thickness. And that is only 0.2 millimeters. So a single clock is only 0.2 millimeters. And if you add another one millimeter on here, then you have to start playing with tolerances to make the parts work together. So it's difficult, not so easy. But it's not an easy process overall. But that's how we made the first mock Okay. Thanks.